How can a medical examiner's office offer comfort to the families in the aftermath of the worst mass shooting in American history? My name is Dr. Joshua Stephanie, and I'm the chief medical examiner for Orange and Osceola counties. I was on call that tragic morning of Sunday, June 12, 2016. At approximately 2 a.m., 911 operators began to receive calls of a mass shooter at the Pulse nightclub near downtown Orlando. Shortly thereafter, our office was notified. At the time, we didn't know how many individuals were killed or injured. It wasn't until hours later when we realized the total number of lives taken was 49. As a medical examiner, my job, as defined by state statute, is to identify the deceased, document any and all injuries, and determine the cause and manner of death. But another service that we provide that is not a state statute is that we also offer comfort to the families. How do we do this? I always tell my staff that any time we interact with someone, it's the worst day of their lives. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, children of the deceased, it's always the worst day of their lives. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine any other job that every time you talk to somebody, it's the worst day of their lives? And as such, we have to treat them with compassion, respect, and yes, offer them a sense of comfort. I knew that during those initial hours of the tragedy, we had to accomplish three goals to co help comfort the families. Our first goal was to transport all 49 individuals to our secure facility. We didn't want anyone to ever think of their loved ones in the same building with that shooter one second longer than necessary. Our second goal was to identify all the individuals. In collaboration with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, they, were, they began to be identified the moment they came to our facility. The sooner we could identify them, the sooner we could notify their families, and there would be no delay in the process of grieving. Our third goal was to complete the autopsies. With our staff of seven doctors and about 30 more forensic uh, staff, we accomplished that goal by 4.30 Tuesday afternoon. So within 72 hours of those initial shots fired, all 49 individuals were transported, secured, identified, and autopsied. In fact, by 4.30 Tuesday afternoon, many of them had already been released and were being reunited with their families. While we couldn't prevent anyone from being taken that night, we hope that our efforts offer some sense of healing and comfort to the families. We weren't allowed into the nightclub actually until later Sunday afternoon as law enforcement was still securing it and making sure it was safe for us to go in. It was at that time when I, when I first got into the scene to assess the situation and, and see what we were dealing with that I made a decision. It, it was a decision I made on the fly and I think actually a visceral decision I didn't really put much thought into at the time. But the decision was to completely isolate the shooter from his victims. I instructed my office to transport him separately, store him separately, and that I would autopsy him separately the very next day in a completely different building. You know, we didn't know that decision would ever be made public. Like I said, I, I made it uh, on the fly. I instructed my office. And honestly, why did I make that? I think um, for anyone intimately involved in what we were doing, my staff, um, any of the state aid that came, any other first responders, I didn't want them to ever have the thought or picture of that shooter in the same room with his victims ever again. I know for me, I didn't want to think of that individual in the same place with the 49 lives that he just took. And at that moment, it seemed like a simple choice, again, one which I didn't think would be made public, but it wasn't really until days later that we found out that the rest of the country found out about it. And not only did they find out about it, but it seemed to resonate with them as sort of some kind of sense of humanity that we offered. We received countless letters and emails uh, of support and including just that decision, focusing on that decision. I'd like to read you, if I could, one such letter from some Alabama. 
Dear ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to write and thank you all for your hard work in helping the victims of the recent shooting at Pulse. I read about how the shooter was kept separate from the victims and was so touched at the care and thoughtfulness you gave while handling this horrific task. I cannot imagine how hard your job is and want to say thank you for all that you do. I will keep your community in my thoughts as it tries to heal. Up until now, I've been talking about how my office tried to comfort the community and the families of the deceased. But as chief medical examiner, I often have to be cognizant of my staff and what their feelings are. Um, the Pulse nightclub had 49 victims. That large number just increased the potential that anyone on my staff could have some kind of personal attachment. Did they know anybody in the club? Did they have children the same age as anyone in the club? Or had they ever been in the club themselves? From the very beginning, I told them if they ever felt overwhelmed by what were they doing or what they were seeing, to please take a step back, focus on what they were doing, take the time to gather themselves, and then they can come back to work. I'm sure many of them did. Um, I don't know the exact number or how many, but I'm sure they did take advantage of that. So when my team is interacting with families and loved ones on the worst day of their lives, how can that not affect them? How can that not affect us as doctors? The answer to that is that we have to somewhat disassociate our emotions from what we're doing so we can concentrate at the task at hand. On an average day, our office handles five to six cases. But that weekend of Pulse was no average day. I asked my staff to handle the 49 individuals, along with the horrific shooting of Christina Grimmie that Saturday night, the tragic loss of two-year-old Lane Graves by an alligator attack on Tuesday, as well as our normal five to six cases per day. It was a monumental task, and I'm sure I was asking a lot. Following the Pulse strategy, in days, weeks, my staff and myself, we took the time to sit down with one another and sort of talk about what we have done, what we have seen. It was good for us to begin talking and communicating with each other about our feelings. After all, we were the only ones who could really experience what we had just done. It turns out that, that talking with, another, with one another and, and sharing our feelings and our emotions of what we had done in those few days was a great place to start. But sometimes you need just someone or something to sit down, sit next to you, beside you, to just be with you, you don't, without speaking or talking, but just sitting there and listening to you, and maybe just sitting next to you and, and feeling your grief. It turns out that animals can be the perfect prescription for comfort. My entire staff are animal lovers, if not dog lovers. We had the opportunity to be visited by 12 Golden Retriever Therapy dogs. Now, if any of you have ever seen, I personally have two Golden Retrievers at home, so I'm used to it, but if, if any of you have ever seen them come to your office, when they came to our office that day, um, just the, the, the sight of them and the touch of them, um, they didn't ask anything of us, they just came in, lay down, let us pet them, let us touch them, and just let us be with them. Just watching my staff, their eyes light up, the tension disappeared from their face. It felt like a weight was lifted off their shoulders. I can't thank those dogs enough. So, I brought a friend here today. Aww. Everybody, this is Sasha and their handler, Phil. Sasha, along with 11 of her friends, not only visited our office, but went around the community and the city visiting other first responders as well as survivors. They were the perfect prescription for comfort for us and the survivors. Looking back on that week, what surprised me most <laughs> was not just the love and support that was given to the families of the victims and survivors, but the love and support that was given to our office. Normally, as medical examiners, none of you know what we do. None of you, uh, fortunately, probably have never heard of us. Um, we probably prefer it that way. We do not like the limelight. 
So if you think about previous mass shootings in American history, Sandy Hook, Columbine, Aurora, and unfortunately many more, you never hear about what we do. So it was a very unusual and unique um, that we got this much attention. And it was our privilege to, in some way, hopefully comfort the families. I always remember the events or that week as something that was so horrific, which could have really torn our community and our city apart. But it had just the opposite effect. It actually made our community stronger, made us all unified, and I was glad that our office could be a small part of that. Thank you. Come on, Sasha.